What's up family? Vlog number seven, we're talking about the balance of God, family, and work, which for me as a church planter, disciple maker, is the work of ministry. I'm not going to show you guys the entire week because I filmed it and it was four hours. I got it down to a one hour rough cut. And now I'm just going to give you 20 minutes of the highlights of those three areas of that balance, a week in the life of a church planter. It's something that I was always really curious about from mentors of mine. How many hours do they spend writing a sermon? And how many hours do they spend reaching out? How many hours do they spend taking Sabbath or being with family. And it's important to note that it's different in every single circumstance. If you're a, a campus minister, you're probably on campus 20 plus hours a week. But if you're a preacher of a larger congregation, you're probably prepping a sermon 20 plus hours a week. It looks different for everyone. Let's get into it. Discipleship Vlogs is our church planting journey of being with Jesus, becoming like Jesus, and doing what Jesus did. Come behind the scenes and discover your place in God's story. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video to get more vlogs about the life of discipleship. Monday, Madison and I try to practice some rest, so we take a family day and we we also try to schedule with each other and just plan out our appointments coming up throughout the week. If I am working on that day, then I'm uploading sermon content or posting to social media. And I'm also beginning to think about the sermon that week so I can internalize it. Honey, what time did you get up? Um, 5.20 this morning. Coffee's a must in this house, right, honey? Yeah, we're almost out. Well, hello there. Got some yak. Joshua wakes up at like 5.30ish most mornings. She woke up a little early this morning. And then Joey woke up at 6. And I get up at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, family's usually up by 6.30. So she's usually the first one up. Mostly just played with her eggs. Didn't really eat them. Did you? You didn't eat those eggs, huh? So the most mornings, I try to get in the Bible. And I got this ESV, which is great because it has the margins, so you can write in them and sort of make your own commentary. And trying to read, but don't have time for, ironically, focal point to focus in and have better time management. No one is ready to follow Jesus who is not ready to put the kingdom of God above everything else in his or her life. And I am planning away as she eats. I have my daily planner here, which I'm not very good at planning each hour of the day, but I do like to use it as a morning reflection, to dwell on gratitude, to journal about my day. It takes just about 10 minutes and it, it sets my mind. I reflect on some scripture in it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So every day I look at my why, um, to inspire others to their full potential in Christ so that as a family, we can marvel in his mercies and help others to do the same. I write out my top three goals of the day, people I need to connect with, yes, my morning schedule, but then I ask myself seven questions, um, one word to describe the type of disciple I want to be today and why I chose it, and I would know that today was a great success if at the end of it I felt, said, or did this. Then I have just a list of some of the tasks I need to do today, those I'm going to put in my phone into a matrix, things to do, things to decide on, to delegate and to delete, or things to manage, focus, limit, and avoid. So she spilled some of my coffee. She likes it to go with her eggs, I guess. Family devotional time. Yeah! I like to sing Sersha's song and read her a Bible story. Israelites came to the promised land. A man named Joshua was in command. Amen. Being a minister can get pretty busy. There's so many distractions, so many different things to do, but I have to remember to seek God's kingdom first, to not be a house divided against itself, to be unified with Him. God's not going to fit into my busy life or my busy religion. Sometimes in life, as God begins to bless us, we commit to His kingdom less. I don't want to do that. Even though he's given me a great family, a great daughter, I need to remember to be putting God first, seeking his kingdom first. And if I'm not doing that, I'm going to burn out on all the other stuff, all the distractions. You coming to visit me in my office? Yeah, we do this a couple times a day. You, you can't be without me? No, you're our best buddy. Oh, you can interrupt me anytime. <laughs> so here's part of my struggle with the scheduling. I, I have the daily planner. This was my one for the final 90 days of 2020. So a few months ago and 
flip through here really quick. Only about half of it got filled out. Hey, I had half of my days at least very well planned through. And I don't want to be in survival mode, but that happens. You know, I, I don't fill it out every day. I could struggle in it. So everything that's digital on my computer, my Akban board, my Google Calendar, those are planned out months in advance. Like, that's all future stuff. But then I want to plan every week and every day and take it off of the digital, get it onto the paper. It's my phone just reminded me every two hours of the day, pray, set intentions. Time to take five, 10 minutes, pray to the Lord, be, you know, be communing with him throughout the day. And it also just helps me to, to take a break from all of the busy work and to say, what do I need to do well in the next two hours? And how can the Holy Spirit help me with that? It's on family day, especially when there's weather and we can't really go outside for a hike or something. Sometimes we play Splendor, an awesome board game, or watch a movie, something like that. Getting busy throughout the week, it's great to set a day aside to do one small thing special for family. So I try to do that. Do I do a good job, honey? You do a great job. All right, I do an all right job. Great job, I said. <laughs> hey, you girl. <laughs> Quick, take the picture. <laughs> Tuesdays typically ministry calls or outreach calls to reach out to the community here, to receive discipleship, and to work with other churches in the area. It's also a day when I like to have the midweek Bible study lesson finished, which I'm going to preach on the following night. So Tuesday morning, I get to get up early again with Saoirse and have my quiet time, but then I get to hop on a, a minister's Zoom call for some discipleship, for loving one another with other evangelists in Boise, Eugene, Ellingham, Missoula, all over the Northwest. Well, it's now one o'clock, a couple hours after the Zoom call I had this morning, doing a bunch of different stuff, but also taking a couple of hours to write midweek for tomorrow. So Wednesday night Bible study, going to do it over Zoom. Sometimes I really fall behind in the schedule where I'm doing that the day of on Wednesday and I'm brushing it up. Oftentimes different points of the day, I'm searching here just like this, carrying her on the hip and I can put in the earphones, listen to a podcast, or an audiobook. So I'm starting to uh, do more vlogs for YouTube. So it's Tuesday night and we just gave Saoirse her bath time, but I'm hopping on a book club I have going for Eat That Frog. And it's a book that I think will appeal to young professionals. I thought I'd try it and see if it fails and see what we can learn. So one day a week, I like to get out on a hike to recharge in nature and have a deeper time of prayer and fasting in the Lord. Usually lands on a Thursday or Friday. This week that happened to be on Wednesday, which is also the day when we have marriage discipleship. We have some mentors, other church leaders, the disciple Madison and I on our marriage communication and dynamic. With going out for that recharge time in nature then, there's the opportunity for more outreach, talking to people on the trail, meeting people as I go, filling up for gas, grabbing a snack, etc. So just talking to people about Jesus in the community. Somebody wants to come with Dada? Dada. Oh, maybe another day. I can't fit you in my bag. It's usually on a Wednesday or a Thursday. Uh, the wife watches the baby so I can get out to have a deeper time with God and enjoy nature. Dead of winter and there's snow. So I just went 15, 20 minutes away from my place to Smith Rock State Park, which is absolutely beautiful. Love it here, could come every single day and knock it bored. And that's part of the, the ministry family balance right there where the wife is home watching babies so I can go out and just have a deeper time with God once a week. Madison and I were talking about that balance last night and she remarked how my passion seems greater for ministry because you know, I read dozens and dozens of leadership books and biblical books and ministry books, but I, I don't read a lot of father books or family books, but it's, it's investment. It's investment in the future. It's investment in my family. It's something that uh, I've been lacking. In. I, I just feel alive. I feel recharged when I can come out here in nature and just see how great God is. I can handle the busyness throughout the week, all of the, the work and the serving when I get to come out here for times like this. When I reflect at the end of the day, and I write down, you know, what brought me joy that day. What was my, my favorite part of the day? Even when I go to the mountaintop or do something like this and get out here, Sertia 
and my family and my wife just, you know, a new laugh that she learned or a new way that she crawled. She's always just the greatest source of my joy throughout the day. So even though I need times like this to recharge, and yeah, even though it can be tiring to have the baby around, and that can be frustrating, she is such a great source of joy, just seeing her little smile. I was going to go on a snowshoe meetup today, but because of the snowstorm, it got canceled. It's kind of ironic. I hope to show you guys that on future vlogs, how I like to get out, get hiking with the community, with different social groups, and it's a great way to meet people. Build relationships around town, and then hopefully share my faith down the line, which is so difficult. If it's not a snowstorm, then it's COVID-19, or the coldness of winter, or the fires that we had in Oregon last summer. We were smoked out, the air quality was so bad, we couldn't go out and breathe. There's been so much that limits us, so much that's out of our control, and it's so hard to find those spots where we do have some control over our lives, where we can get out and share our faith. That's been the frustration through 2020. And there's multiple bald eagle and golden eagle nests all over this park. There's two gold eagles nesting right up there and they're roosting and there's three bald eagles fighting right up here as I pulled in. So it's always great every time I come here I get to see eagles and usually eagle photographers who always want to have great conversation and talk about their photos and maybe even talk about God one of these days. Today I'm praying about courage and thinking about how if we're in God's hands, going off of God's strength, you know, what have we to be afraid of? I'm preaching on that from midweek tonight over Zoom. But I just see it in my day-to-day -day life with my daughter. She, uh, for a while, sir, she's been afraid of trash bags. Whenever you bring the trash bag out, it's just this irrational fear and she'll start crying. And so it, it, it took a few times of getting the trash bag out, you know, of holding her, comforting her, letting her know it's gonna be okay. You know, Saoirse being in her parents' hands but now we take the trash bag out and she's curious, but she's not afraid. And I think she's unafraid because she's secure, knowing that her parents are there, that she's in our hands. The same way with God. If God's hand is with us, strengthening us, I think we can take courage in our hearts. Courage is needed so much if we're going to evangelize this city. So the great thing about going to a park like Smith Rock and just getting out in nature is there's tons of people out there. I was able to strike up a conversation with four other people on the trail because I had something like this in my hand. So many people, when you go out to a park, when you go hiking, they're interested in photography or videography. So this is the, the conversation starter. And you know, then I get around to mentioning that I'm here on church planting, share my faith a little bit, ask them spiritual questions. So one of the only ways to meet people is at a fire pit. I just made a great person that pointed out propane prices going up. It's so hard to get those outdoor heaters. And you agree, right? It's... I agree 100%, but it's a great way to socialize people. And people, you know, they want warmth. So they're gathering around the fire pit and you can say, where are you from? Um, what do you do? Hey, I'm a, a YouTuber. Hey, I'm a minister. And you can strike up conversation with them. So after Smith Rock and talking with four people there, just coming to have lunch at a food cart, can chat with another four people gathered around the fire pit. Eight people from spending a few hours going out to a few places. It is so tough to do during COVID-19 to, to share your faith, to be an evangelist, to be on a mission team, but you can still do it. You can still find where the people are at and go to meet them. So sometimes we have a lot of fun, Sersha, like watching Daniel Tiger while reading corporate bylaws. Eventually setting up our church plan to be self-sustaining and to have our own board of directors. So there's a lot of corporate bylaws we've got to research. Saoirse reads the corporate bylaws and I watch Daniel Tiger. What do you think of me trying to lean into YouTube and share more, share more of my life? I think that'd be a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. Here's what we have done. Here's what it's still up. It feels like it's full on safe. Here's where it seems like some potential yep. attraction. Yeah, I think that would be interesting. I would, I would like to know if that uh, attracts people. You ready for your bath? Good. Yeah. So right now it's 1 a.m. and that's an exception. Usually I'm up and working at my computer up until about 10, 11 p.m. I just like to go back to work after dinner and I like to work up until dinner. 
10 hour days typically throughout the week for ministry. But this is an exception. This is being up until 1 a.m. This is just so I can get this premiered tomorrow with the blog post written for it. So I want to be consistent in my content. Um, haven't stayed up this late in a while. So on Thursday, I let Madison get out so she could have a deeper time in the Word, her own time with God. She also had some appointments to run, so I was home at Sertia. Then on Thursday nights, we have an open Bible discussion with our singles ministry where we just like to talk with more people in the community about Jesus and get them involved in the Bible. So Sarah and I are hanging out, day with the daughter. One thing that I always let sort of fall behind me is the home improvement projects. I just delay them till later. I think I need to be building up the kingdom, not my own house. So I have so many projects that I'm behind on that the wife is always asking me to do. And I don't even know where to get started on all of them. One of Sersha's favorite things is just pulling her socks off. Can I just say, it's pretty difficult to hold a camera and a baby at the same time. I don't know how all those vlogging mamas do it. Um, man, props to my wife who has a vlog about motherhood and ministry. Go and follow that at Madison Hungerford. Mom is home. Wife's grocery haul. Unloading groceries, a husband's duty. Diapers, wipes, pants, shirt. We're taking Sarah to her doctor's appointment, so it's go, go, go. So Thursday evening, typically a quick dinner, and then I run off, and Madison is a superstar getting dinner for Sasha. What time do you have to go? Uh, so usually I leave by six in order to reserve a table to have Bible discussion around seven in bed. So Sasha, she goes to sleep without daddy on Thursday night. Get out to the Bible discussion and one stays back with Sersha. So thanks, sweetie, for always making dinner on Thursday nights. So just got back from Bible discussion and it was a great time. Definitely a rush. Madison was baking me up some vegetables, put them in a Tupperware, and I'm eating in the car. I'm having multiple phone calls to get people there. We can only meet six people or less and we have to mask up and take every precaution. And a lot of people want to cancel during the winter. There's a bunch of snow coming down and light it out a couple of times. Some weeks we'll have to tell people, hey, you can't come because we're limiting it to six people. And other weeks we'll plan it out and then everybody has to cancel due to the weather or COVID or something else. So tonight it was just me and a couple of guys catching up, talking about Jesus. It was an awesome time. Friday I like to leave open to put any finishing touches on the sermon and to have time to share my faith more, reach out with the community before the busy weekend. Oh. So Sarah's just sleeping in a little more on some mornings. Which is great, so it's breakfast time at 8.14. So I had finished the sermon outline actually pretty quickly today. It's almost noon time for lunch, but I did my construction project. I kind of just made these shelves to feature some of my gear because, man, if this stuff isn't on the wall, then it's just usually strewn about my desk or sitting in a backpack somewhere. So, running to the store really quick to get the wife some ice cream. And during COVID, it's kind of one of the only opportunities to share our faith. It's just to share as you go, getting gas, getting groceries with the clerks. So we'll see, maybe I can tell somebody about the church or Jesus and see if they're interested or not. I'd say, I don't know if you'd ever be interested, but I'm on a mission team in town. I'll give you a church invite if you ever want to check it out. All right. All right, Thank yeah. Boy, have a great night. So gas station attendants are people I, I usually try to share my faith with, though I usually don't get to telling them about Jesus, just handing them a church card and letting them know there's a place they could come to if they're interested. Saturdays typically I'm hanging out with the ministry or we're going on hikes, we're trying to get together and have fellowship, but on this Saturday it was actually a Madison going to town to have a Bible study, so I was with Sertia until our in-laws came. Our in-laws live three hours away, so they come over to help us every once in a while. They're a huge blessing to help us with Sertia. It's Saturday, yay! Yay! But I'm tired. I, I stayed up till 1 a.m. again. 1 a.m. last night. You were dead asleep. You were asleep. Just because I had a lot of work to do. 
Sarsh and I are going to Klein Falls, which is a state park just five minutes down the road. So it's a favorite prayer spot of mine. And we're gonna go get daddy-daughter time and pray to God about the sermon tomorrow and enjoy the waterfall. I tightened up. She starts laughing whenever she gets up on my back. All right, watch your head. We got these beautiful juniper berries here. Okay, we ducked, we're good, we're good. First thing you notice when you get to the state park is the smell of the juniper trees. After a fresh rain, fresh snow, they're just super pungent. It smells so good, the sage and the juniper here in Bend, Oregon. We love it, right, Sersha? Mmm, sage and juniper. You smell some sage? Well, your mom is allergic to sage, so maybe you shouldn't, but it's great. Sersha's a trooper. She's done nine miles before, though I had to carry her, you know, majority of the time. Times like this, she's getting away with the wife, getting away with the daughter, getting away in nature. I can recharge. Everything else is easy when you recharge, when you go to the Lord in prayer, meditation, and spend time with family because they uh, bring joy into life. This is really our number one church planter. She writes all my sermons. She's got all the strategies. Best walk with God. I rely on her so much. Yeah, you're good to go. Okay, let's go. The one thing about this vlog, I don't want to do things just for a show or for the eyes of others, but it does motivate me to, to live at the edge of my comfort zone push myself to live the life of a church planter, to, to be a good father to Sersha, to get out on hikes like this on Saturday rather than staying home watching TV. You know, to be a church planter, a YouTuber, and a father is not easy work. It means sun up to sundown, 60 plus hours a week typically, working for the Lord. It means daily outreach. It means thinking through things months in advance. It means taking courage and being on the edge of your comfort zone. It also means going through sorrows and being deeply and intimately involved in people's lives as we fellowship together. And usually my temptation is to let the work go by default while my prayer or my family life can go by neglect. And that just doesn't work out. I have to recalibrate because it's God who sustains me and it's my family who gives me joy every single day. And I'm glad about that she got here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, baby. Sunday is actually the busiest day for a church planter. So busy that I'm gonna make a whole other video about Sunday because that is sun up to sundown crazy. Serve it up. Just got to say hi for the vlog. Hey, this is great stuff. We had it once before. Excellent pizza. We can't wait to have it again. You know, something this vlog has taught me and I want to ask you as well. It's a challenging question. Imagine if a documentary film crew were telling your success story and they were following you right now. What would you be doing? That's what it's like when you're vlogging yourself. And that's a great mentality to have for self accountability. Let me know in the comments. What would you live your life like if a documentary film crew were following you? How would you be making disciples? Thank you.